Homegoing is a novel that follows the family lineage of two half-sisters, uh, Afia. The first half-sister is the Fanti wife of the British governor of the Cape Coast Castle, which is a slave castle um, that still stands um, in Cape Coast, Ghana. And then the second sister, Essie, is kept in the castle as a slave before being sent to America. So the novel kind of follows 250 or so years of history in both Ghana and America. The book was inspired by a trip that I took to Ghana in 2009. I received a uh, grant from my university, Stanford, to go to Ghana and research a novel. Um, and it was while on this trip that I ended up taking a tour of the Cape Coast Castle myself um, and just got to see um, the entire, you know, kind of lay of, of that castle and heard the tour guide talk about um, the fact that the soldiers who lived and worked in the castle during this time would sometimes marry the local women. And then from there, he took us down to see the dungeons. Um, and I was so struck by by the idea that there could be, you know, free people kind of walking above all of these um, captives who were about to be sent um, along the Middle Passage. One of the chapters, um, H's chapter, which is the beginning of part two, takes place um, mostly in a coal mining town called Pratt City um, after H, the character, has been arrested um, and sentenced to work in the coal mines under Alabama's convict leasing system. Um, and again, I, I had grown up in Alabama but knew nothing about this practice um, that lasted an astonishingly long amount of time um, in, in that state and along a lot of different southern states. Um, and so that, that entire facet of history, um, the kind of post-Civil War um, criminalization of, of black men period um, in America was something that I knew very little about um, and, and was really surprised to learn as much as I did. I think uh, specifically just looking at America and a lot of these kind of conversations about race that are still popping up today, things like the Black Lives Matter movement or what have you, I think um, we can kind of directly uh, link a lot of these moments to these unhealed um, parts of our history that, that kind of began uh, with slavery. Um, and so I think there, there's still a lot, a lot of work to be done um, and a, a need to kind of take a, a longer, deeper, more meaningful look at, at our history. I suppose if I, if I had to say anything, it's that, um, you know, all of these, all of these kind of traumatic moments that we, that we look at in our, in our history, um, they happened to, to people, to individuals um, just like us. Um, and that it's important to, to not look back on those moments and just think about um, people as this kind of mass, this kind of faceless mass, to, to remember to put names and faces to each of these experiences. I actually wrote this book um, without an outline, but using a family tree um, that looks a lot like the family tree that's just at the front of the book. Um, so I kind of always knew um, how many characters I wanted and, and a little bit about each character, though I didn't know um, what was specifically going to happen in their lives. Um, but I, I do feel like I had kind of um, just kind of the vaguest sense of each of them as I moved because I had made this family tree first. I think there, there could have been a way to write this book and have it be black and white, like literally, um, in terms of people's like moral complicity and um, moral responsibility or, or whatever it was. But that, that didn't interest me as much as kind of trying to create characters who behave in, in ways that I think that people actually do, you know. I think, um, I think we have a tendency in the present to kind of um, to kind of look at people in the past as though they were, you know, less smart, less moral than than we are. And had I been living in Ghana in the 18th century, I wouldn't have made those those same choices. Um, but I think when you when you actually read the history, you, you understand that these are people who are just like us, who have the kind of hopes and fears and, and dreams that we all have, and and are are tr also just trying to do the best that they can for their families and 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 compromising things morally that they shouldn't be. And history kind of, um, you know, the, the um, hindsight kind of gives us the opportunity to look, look back and say, this was wrong or that was wrong. Um, but I think sometimes when you are stuck in the middle, it's a lot harder to, to fight, for, fight for things that are good. 
Um, and so it was important to me that all of these characters feel um, morally complicated. You know, I really firmly believe in that Toni Morrison quote, and I'm going to butcher it, but the one about like uh, searching for the, the book that you wish you could pick off your bookshelf, and if it's not there, then you have to write it. Um, this book was very much, I think, the book that I would have wanted to read when I was a child and had all of these questions about identity and race and ethnicity and, and those, kinds of, um, those kinds of questions and those kinds of thoughts, I think, all appear in this book. Just having this different ethnic background than, than most African Americans in America do um, was something that I, that I thought a lot about when I was a child, um, particularly because we grew up in predominantly white neighborhoods. Um, and so I didn't really have like a, a model for, I suppose, how to be black or what being black meant um, in America aside from you know, my own family, which had this very different cultural, um, cultural background and, and historical background um, than African Americans. And so I think a lot of this book and, and kind of a lot of my childhood was attempts to kind of discover what, what blackness meant for me um, what was allowed, um, and, and to try to, to piece that together. I think when you're, you know, when you're 12 and um, trying to, trying to, you know, just ask the kind of basic identity questions that, that all of us have, um, and then have that be complicated by America's kind of racial tension, I think um, those questions become a lot more difficult than, than they need to be. There are, there's, you know, a million different ways to be black, and they're all right. Home has always been very fluid for me, not just because um, I immigrated to America at such a young age, but also once we got to America, I lived in several different states before landing in Alabama. And so the idea that home is a place has never really resonated, re resonated with me. I think um, for me, home is, is more about um, you know, where my family is, where my loved ones are, um, this, this thing that you kind of create and that you also bring with you. Um, and I think for these characters, even though they have been torn and, and fractured in innumerable ways, like home, home is this big family that they have, um, even if they don't know it. <laughs>